go. I just love this drill because it makes a beautiful shift. It doesn't make any noise. It's perfectly quiet. 1175 at five and a half inches a minute. Um, I've used it a ton now because I, it just feels so good to feel like you're cutting well. Now a big moment to see if we uh, to see if we're getting greedy with uh, with this recipe. So full depth of, of cut. Only 10 percent, or only a smaller width of cut, but the question is, is it too much? Let's find out. I think we'll be okay. As soon as we get through that first little loop and there's some room for the chips to evacuate, I think we'll be okay. Oh yeah. That's fine. 20 inches a minute. Look at that, folks. Ripping right through that, no problem. And this is one reason why I love this coolant system, is the high pressure of the air, which you can adjust high or low, really evacuates the chips out of that pocket. Nothing wrong with flood cooling, and probably better, and well, there's nothing wrong with it, but I like the fact that, like I can look in that pocket right now, and there isn't a single chip. Um, for my humble opinion, uh, for machinists like us that are lower end or basic machinists, Coolant, which serves three purposes, you know, uh, lubricating the part, actually cooling the part, and clearing chips. I think clearing chips is probably the most important, making sure you're not recutting them and making sure um, you don't end up loading up the flutes of your tool, especially on material like aluminum. So um, I'm going into the coolant video right now, but um, I was one of the things I was going to mention is the reason I bought the Trico unit when I first got the Tormach was I knew that I wouldn't use the Tormach for some periods of time, you know, maybe a week or two weeks. Uh, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't the same level of machinist then, and I'd heard with flood coolant that it evaporates, which means, the water evaporates, which means you need to remix it in and measure it, and it can become pretty nasty if it sits, and it can cause rust if you don't use the right stuff or eat off the paint. And I just, I'm the kind of guy where I want to walk down to the machine, turn it on, and use it. I don't want to have to worry about it rusting if I walk away from it and all that. I also um, didn't, obviously didn't have the enclosure back then, and I didn't want the big mess of it. So, um, um, and actually, now that I say all that, I'm kind of lying, because I thought the Trico, back when I had the tag, so it predates the Tormach, but um, that's why I like it. So, okay, let's hop over to this uh, Maritool guy. And hit run, just the coolant lines. I have been a Maritool customer now for probably a little over a year. Um, loved their stuff and, and bought it because I'd heard good things. And I coincidentally just had my first conversation with Carl from Maritool. What a nice guy. Holy smokes. Um, we, we had a really good conversation and he talked about how when he was a purchasing manager or procurement guy, uh, he was frustrated that he couldn't get the time of day uh, when he was a smaller time buyer. And then when he was a bigger buyer, tool companies were, you know, recruiting to get his attention. And so he really has made that their focus to, to give the customer service to any machine shop or any machinist. And, and, and again, I, I bought them from them for a year and he didn't, uh, and it has been great. And then when I called, um, I was asking for new roughing here, the 316s. Wow, we're, we're flying through the part holes. Um, I was asking for help on a 316th, or sorry, quarter inch rougher for aluminum. The one I have is the ALTIN coating, which is I think an aluminum coating, which I guess is really bad to use when you're cutting aluminum. Anyways, um, he was super nice. And I sort of said, hey, you know, he asked who I was with and I said, oh, Saunders Machine Works. I was like, we bought a, you know, we bought hundreds of dollars worth of tools from you in the past few months, not thousands or anything. And he said, oh, no, no. Um, and he was, you know, had helped me a lot already at this point on the call. And then it was really cool because he said that he had actually heard about my videos and someone had sent them to him. And we had a long conversation about, um, you know, the role of education and, and trying to, um, you know, focus on machining and engineering and with our youth and in our country. And it was really an uplifting call. It made me uh, happy and proud to be doing what I'm doing and kind of ties, ties back into the video we just did on CNC basics with the Bridgeport and the 
Tormach, like I said, I was kind of nervous about making that video because I thought, you know, you guys might think, oh, come on, John, we want you to be doing cool stuff that we're learning, and this is a basic video, but really appreciate it. Uh, you know, really good view count on that video, really good comments, and um, I really meant what I said when uh, it's great that folks are able to get involved with, with helping our youth learn. And what I'm trying to figure out for the open house, uh, I've got some really cool gifts and prizes and so forth, and I want to, I think I want to try to turn that into some sort of a um, revenue producing thing um, and, I, and I don't know where the money's going to go. Um, I need to find an, a, an effort, a local thing preferably, whether it's one of the local robotics programs or machinist clubs or something like that. But um, I'd like to, uh, you know, there's some great, I think I'm working on it, some great um, little prizes and I thought maybe everyone can chip in a few bucks if they want to put their hat in the ring for those prizes and then we'll hopefully be able to give some money to uh, whether it's the high school machining program or something like that. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so let's see here. We're, should be the last step to pass right there. Ran great too. No, uh, probably could have gotten a little more con uh, aggressive on that. Now all we need to do is our little uh, cut guide for the split clamp and we'll be ready to flip her. I don't think I we looked at the actual run times in Sprut um, for the cam operations. This one is running, I think, about seven minutes, which isn't bad at all. The, when we flip it, there's a, probably another seven minutes to hog out that material. So that takes a little bit of time. But again, folks, pretty darn cool uh, how you can take a part like this on a machine like the Tormach, end up with, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, download it from the internet and you're able to make the part. I think that's awesome. All right, let's flip her. You know what, I'm gonna clean out my vise here. I'll be right back. Before we throw her back in, folks, look at that. You know, for not really focusing on, uh, or you know, not spending an excess amount of time to nail down our tool pass, beautiful finish, beautiful cut quality, looks great so far, really smooth. Um, so let's flip her over now and, and hog out the rest of that. Coincidentally, the parallels I had in there are just the right height to leave secure it as much as I can, but not have the cutter um, give the cutter enough depth to uh, successfully make that cut we need. Let me go ahead and take a look, just to make sure. Yep, looks good. Okay, let's rock and roll on the hogging side. We'll watch a few cuts and then I'll fast forward, but um, I owe, ooh, actually, yep, okay, we're good. Um, I owe a big thank you to two people, and one of them is quite overdue. The one that's quite overdue is a fellow named Matt out of North Carolina, and longtime uh, viewer, follower, great guy. He's shot me a number of emails over the years with little tips, tricks, FYIs, all that, you know, sort of gotten to know him. And um, by the way, we're being way too conservative. I would take, I would probably double that with the cut next time, uh, just based on experience. So, oh well. Um, Matt asked to send me a package and I sort of said, okay, you know, of course, uh, what, what you've got is a little to be a surprise. And so what shows up is you're, you guys actually had known about it or been listening to it for a number of episodes now. A very, very nice, deluxe, high-end, all those wonderful superlatives, Audio-Technica wireless lav mic. Holy cow. I mean, that was, I almost wanted to send it back to him to refuse such a nice gift. Um, so Matt, a big thank you. It's been great. It's freed me up from not having to be literally wired to the camera. And it's also a great safety benefit because I don't have that wire dangling from me. So really appreciate that. The other thank you, which is certainly no less generous, was a fellow named Dale. He had some extra TTS holders, actually a number of them. And he sort of said, would you like them? We can trade you for something. And I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely use some and I'm happy to, uh, to pay for them or trade you for work or whatever you want. And so he sent them to me and then ended up saying, no, you know what, just, uh, just consider it a gift. And I'm not willing to 
leave it at that. I'll, I'll figure out how to get you back mail, but really, really appreciate both those generosities. So with that, let's fast forward to the rest of it. I wanted to mention one of the reasons why we wanted to go down a little more than half an inch on the first off is so that when we're doing this off, cutting down the one inch, we make sure there's no little film or thin layer of material left. And as you can see, we're profiling out a part of that split clamp perfectly. And that's, and that's exactly what we want. On that first off, if we'd only gone down half an inch, sometimes you'll get that stuff and you can usually cut it away with a deburring tool or sometimes you can even peel it off by hand but i don't want to deal with that i want to have it done as as well as we can uh, by the machine so um, I, I wouldn't know if i'd really call that a trick or a tip but um, i guess it's something of the sorts so we'll finish this up here um, and then use our three quarter or three eighth inch to do a cleanup pass and then we'll be done ready for the last stop bit of chatter but that's it's gonna happen regardless just it's too long of an end mill not to happen a tiny amount um, but we'll take a look at the surface finish I think you'll see it's it's certainly acceptable if not quite good now the, the quite a real question which needs to be true for me not to to eat my words is right now are we gonna see a tool path on the bottom face and I hope we don't it looks Looks like we do. Well, can't tell with the the lighting. We'll have to take a look. It's not the end of the world if you do, except that darn it, we're supposed to be at 0.998, not uh, one inch. Okay, so we do have a tiny amount of, of toolpath visible down there, and that bothers me because, darn it, I can hold uh, easily hold a thou with my number 11 roughing tool, and I also, I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure this tool 100 is measured quite correctly. I, I can't fathom being two thou off. That's, that's just, that's hard to do for me on the measuring, but you still have it a little bit there, and so in the next stop, I'll, I'll maybe come up, or in the next time I run this part, I'll, I'll maybe come up another thou, but Again, not the end of the world, but uh, I was trying to prove a point. Um, what I do need to fix is I need to go deeper on this part right here because that did leave that little flangey piece I was just talking about. I didn't want around here. So when I make, make the next one with the 316th, I'll just go a hair deeper right there. All right, let's uh, run the third up here. All right, let's finish her up here. He's going to use that quarter inch end mill to make that little pocket that'll be the recess for the socket and cap screw. Um, and I actually realized we are going to tap it in the machine, uh, just not what you think. Uh, so stay tuned here, we'll do that in a second. That was nice and quick. Switched to tool 25. Just spot it. You can get by without spotting sometimes, but um, again, it goes back to risk. I would rather do one extra little tool change and know that I've got a good spot and worry about a drill walking on me on a part that I've already got, you know, a little bit of time into. So, um, if that we're doing this on a production basis, I would switch to a shorter, you know, screw length drill or uh, the right uh, angle tip so they're self spotting or heck, even carbide. That way uh, you can get rid of that tool change. So this is going to go all the way down, yeah, and then we'll come back here with drill F drill, which is 257, so 7 thou over quarter, um, and if anything, it'll drill a little over that um, diameter as a clearance hole. I'm excited for the tool changer, don't get me wrong, I'm very excited to get it running, but I will tell you, I'm dubious that it's going to always save me time because on little jobs like this, I can, um, I can, uh, oops, that was a goof. 
Uh, okay. Um, let's see here. It wrapped it into that hole. I need to go look at the cam. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. It looks like, uh, as usual, operator error. I should have had plenty of... Um, there we go. Yeah. Should have pecked it gently. Um, obviously, the correct safe plane or starting plane looks much better. It's a clearance hole uh, for a bolt, so um, frustrating, but, but certainly not going to cause a problem for the part itself. And on that note, as we're finishing up here, we'll, we'll actually we'll come back and do the tap, but um, you know, I go quickly, um, both because I hate slow tutorials and slow videos, but um, to make money in the job shop, man, you gotta be fast. And I'm learning that as I'm training Jared on CAD and CAM. I grew up as a computer nerd. I, I love computers and was pretty good and fast, and, and, and Jared wasn't, and that's okay. But um, I'm realizing that being fast and being able to plow through stuff quickly, and you simulate it, I don't mean careless, I just mean quick, is, a, is an important skill set. Now let's tap this hole in the machine. So I looked at the Sprut Cam model and I saw that it was coordinates were G01 X.375 Y negative 0.25 F20. That is gonna put us right above the hole. And I've got a spring plunger guide. And let me just grab a tap. Go ahead and drop a little bit of coolant down there. Using a spiral fluted tap so that we um, pull the chip out. Notice it fits through our clearance hole, which is perfect. Pre tension that guy. Boom. So keep my tap straight. Once you've got it started, you can do, frankly, do the rest um, offline or out of the machine because it's less likely to walk on you. You can see the chips coming out, which is perfect. That's as bottom as I'm going to get for there. And I'll check it again outside the machine to make sure I went deep enough. Um, again, the tap guy just helps you start it straight and then you're usually good. All right, well, there's your Wednesday widget, folks. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, what did I learn? Well, I goofed here. Should have run that a little deeper. And then operator error on the one hole there. Um, again, not a big deal. I think the part turned out great. I think it's gonna work great for the customer. Um, oh, you know what? Before I end, we'll go, uh, we'll go cut that on the saw real quick. Okay, here is the DeWalt setup to make that slot. These saws are incredible. I already ran my mouth about them earlier in this video. They are also the most dangerous tool in the shop, I would guess. You are an idiot if you think you can even come close to risking any sort of a not rock solid fixturing solution. So, a machinist uh, vice in here, toolmaker's vice, I uh, have to use a little piece of half inch to uh, offset the fact that this is hitting the clamp here. It is tight as could be. Uh, my guide guide mark is on the back side, which is fine, but um, in the location here, tolerance isn't that critical. So we should be good. We're gonna take it nice and easy. This will be safe, and because it's well secured, we should get a good cut quality. Take a look. Look at that, folks. Beautiful. Let's see if we can zoom in a little there. It's a great, yeah, you can see a little bit of the tool mark, but, but very nice. Um, so all I'm gonna do before I um, consider this one totally done is just chase that tap, pull out, make sure that works okay, and we're good on this one. So with that, folks, I hope you have enjoyed today's Wednesday widget. If you had, I always appreciate the likes, the thumbs up, the comments, and sharing this with your friends or other folks who may have not have heard of the channel. Otherwise, I will see you soon. I'm gonna get that coolant video out. I gotta get a lathe video out real soon on the turret lathe. Uh, lots of good stuff to come. Take care, folks. Hey, Judd. Hey, Judd. You wanna say hi to everybody? You wanna say hi? Do you want a treat? Can you twirl? Twirl. Good boy, boy.